The Steam client beta was updated earlier this week with uh, improved performance monitoring, which is super cool. I saw the notification for this, but I didn't have a ton of time to look into it because this week was very busy for me. Uh, the old in-game oh, FPS counter. Should we tell them what you were doing this week? Is that a thing? I can tell them the one, but I don't know if... Do we want to announce that one? We shot Scrapyard Wars 10. We did. It was epic. The premise was genuinely amazing. Okay, anyway, carry on. Uh, anyways, yeah, the Steam client beta was updated earlier this week with improved performance monitoring. The old in-game FPS counter has been updated into the in-game overlay performance monitor. Okay. Uh, adding more detailed information about frame rates, frame generation, CPU and GPU performance, and more. Try it yourself by enabling the client beta by going to settings and then in-game. In the Steam, in other Steam news, Valve has introduced what it says are first of many oh. accessibility tools. This is other stuff. Why don't we talk about this first? Then? Let's do that. So you think that this is a really big deal, yeah. and I don't necessarily disagree, but I just I want to hear your take about how big of a deal it is that they have uh, more detailed information about frame gen specifically, I think is what you were yeah. sort of focused on. Uh, again, I haven't personally actually dove into this yet. I'm hoping it also has frame time stuff. Um, but I just really like back in the day, you know, needing to get fraps and all these other kind of things to figure out what the heck was going on. Having this built into steam is really cool. And having a tool built into steam where you can learn more about what's happening I'm to your at system long enough, because like crazy, there's all these videos and, and people talking about trying to figure out like, oh, like what is the, what is the impact? What is, why does my game feel kind of weird right now? Yeah. Like the people playing competitive shooters, dealing with frame gen stuff. I'm not necessarily like, like I said, I don't necessarily want the fight. I don't actually really care so much about the fake frames versus real frames war. The part of that that I do care about is when it's highly misrepresented. And we've seen that a lot in like the NVIDIA, NVIDIA presentations and stuff. Right. But the technology by itself is super cool yeah. in the right scenarios. Why does marketing have to ruin just, everything? Yeah, it's just marketed horribly because it's yeah. it's false promises, really. It's a cool tech on its own. Yeah. It, like it, even even multi-frame gen. Like yeah, it's a cool tech on its own. It, it has a place and it yeah. has a purpose. Cinematic single player games. Yeah, as long as they're not too fast paced. Yeah, sometimes it's a problem. Um, and as long as the base performance is enough. But... Tools like this yeah. make it so that you can turn it on, see how many fake frames are happening, uh, evaluate the game, play it a little bit, see how it feels, dial things in. Like it's just, it's another cool, useful tool. I love these types of things. I love, uh, you know, like tools for nerds. What, what does Google call it? Stats for geeks. Or stats, stats for, for geeks. Nerds stats or something for nerds. Like that. Or something. I love stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Give me more tools. I'm going to poke around. I'm going to try things. I'm excited to just see with ease on any one system, what's kind of going on? Like if somebody's like, oh yeah, I'm trying to play this game, but like aiming feels sluggish for some reason. Or like, I feel like I'm on target. I'm not hitting people or whatever. We can like, now we have another tool to try to evaluate. Right. You can also do like, you know, screen record and slow it down to see like maybe maybe you just suck. That's uh, possible. <laughs> but but <laughs> those, tool, those tools already exist. Um, so have yeah. Have you I, tried I getting think, good? I think this is, uh, this is sweet. I, uh, we actually have a, like a direct appeal to Valve. Valve does so much cool stuff that yeah. just generally makes gamers' lives better and easier. Um, and there's one tool that I feel they have neglected over uh, a long period of time that I really want to see them update. We have a new edition of the most average PC build mm. coming. So are you familiar with the series? I think so. This is number three or four. I can't remember. Um, but it's uh, it's updated to 2025's version, uh, or the, a recent 2025 release of the uh, Steam Hardware Survey. And um, the Steam Hardware Survey is an invaluable <coughs> tool for determining what yeah. exactly it is that gamers have in their systems. Um, it does a great job uh, both for people who are configuring gaming PCs to you know, be able to look through and figure out, okay, like, what's the norm? You know, what or you know, what should I kind of be targeting to play games that developers are likely to be building their games around? And then it's also great for developers because it gives them a really great idea, especially over time, of what the changing trends are in hardware configurations out there so that as they're developing their games and their performance targets, they know what kind of hardware that Steam gamers have. 
And while it does a pretty good job of the granularity of certain components, like GPUs, for instance, you can see exactly which model of GPU in many cases. Sometimes the mobile ones kind of get mixed in, but minor stuff, you know? Um, for things like CPUs, they just tell you how many cores and what clock speed range. Like, this, we're talking like, like net burst era of information here. Yeah. Um, so, so one of the examples that Elijah gives in the video is he goes, well, okay, six cores clocked between this and this, that could either be this 12th gen CPU or this Xeon from 10 years ago. They literally both fit the bill. We're going to assume it's more like the yeah. new one, but come Still on. Still can't know. This is the point we're trying to make. And so, and some of the information they have on monitors, for instance, really good, really useful. We know what resolution people are running. That's great. What refresh rate are they running? As a game developer, I might want to know that. As a gamer who's just, you know, trying to figure out the the competition out there, I might I might want to know, hey, you know, am I falling behind a little bit right now because I'm one of the only people still running a 60 hertz monitor? Which to be clear, it's not that's not the case, but that it is changing. High refresh rate monitors are becoming more prevalent. How prevalent? I don't know. Yeah. It would be nice to know. If the Valve hardware survey had it in there, then that would be great. And it, it for, for us in the media, it also helps us to tailor our content to whatever people are most likely to be having questions about. You know, as there's a big transition, there's a big transition to 1440p right now. Yep. So, okay, we're looking at that going, all right, so sh we should do like a 1440p monitors buying guide or whatever the case may be. Um, the Steam Hardware Survey is an invaluable tool. It's one that they have, that they publish for free for everybody to use. Which is wild. Which is great, but also self-serving because it's to help developers and gamers meet together on Steam. So make it better. Uh, there, there's some key er there's some key ways that the Steam hardware survey needs to improve, and so we kind of appeal to Valve's generosity, I guess, because that's the only reason they have to do anything now that they're just a money printing machine, um, yeah. and ask them to bestow upon <clears throat> us mere mortals uh, a better version of the hardware survey. And I don't remember how we got on the subject. I think you know a couple people there. I do, but they're Valve people, so like, they're great, and do whatever the f they want, I think. Yeah. I don't know. It, like, I know their, their company's super flat, and there's there's these rumors that I've heard that you can, like, kind of work on whatever, which is clearly not 100% true, or else nothing clearly. would ever happen. Yeah, like, I have, I have contacts there that are clearly in, like, a role. Yeah. You know, and they have like, a job title and, and stuff. And, like, yeah. customer support tickets are still answered. Yeah. And if that was purely elective, just, like... No yeah. one's ever going to do it. So, like, they, Are you sure? I love answering customer support. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, I used to pitch in when things were really busy at NCIX. I still do. Yeah, it's fair enough. Part of life. I don't. I don't exactly love it, but you know. Um, but on that dark day, when Gaben's light finally fades, mm. what do you think is going to happen? I have no idea. Not, I think a lot of the reasons why Valve has been so based and you know i sometimes bark at their 30 percent and stuff like that but they have overall been a force for good absolutely for the most part yeah they, <sighs> they, they take a lot of the pie yeah i think but they do good stuff with i think it. I, I do think that gaben just like not needing any more super yachts is a big part of why they just don't bother to try to squeeze more money yeah like nothing as far as I can tell, nothing prevents Valve from upping their cut to 35%. But not even that. Like you or look, 50. You look at the handheld market, and they, they could have just gone with Windows. But they didn't. Yeah. And they did a ton of work in yeah. order to not. And, like, you look at what's happening with, with Bazite and stuff now, and it's like, wow. They are really pushing this forward in a way that nobody has. Um. I don't know. They they do cool stuff. I wish they made more games. Still, I know people talk about Half Life all the time, but like, give me another Portal. I don't know. I'm gonna... I'd enjoy another Portal. I'd play it, but it's co op. I I love the heck out of dad. Portal One, and I felt like Portal Two was rehashing a lot of the same territory. I don't see what Portal Three would bring to the table. More co op. Yeah. Okay. More co op. Um. 
Yeah. Anyway, in other news, uh, Valve is introducing what it says are the first of many accessibility tools to Steam and SteamOS. Players using Big Picture and SteamOS will get a text size slider, high contrast mode, a reduce motion toggle to disable some animations and screen transition effects, and in addition, SteamOS devices, so Steam Deck and Legion Go S, for now, will gain a customizable screen reader, a color filter that affects both the Steam UI and in-game graphics, and they can choose between... Oh, and uh, you can find all this in the new accessibility tab in your Steam settings. I'm really surprised they didn't already have, like, high contrast mode and stuff. Classic Valve. The only thing that's surprising about them being based is that they weren't already that based. 